NAACP Senior Vice President of Strategy and Advancement, Jamal Watkins, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. The NAACP National Convention has taken over Boston for the weekend. The convention was last held here more than 40 years ago, and since then, Boston and the nation have changed. There is much more work yet to do. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR on this final Sunday in July already, huh? I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Sharma Zaketi. WCVB is the exclusive local broadcast partner of the NAACP National Convention, and we are pleased this morning to have Jamal Watkins with us. Joining us from the Convention Center, he is the NAACP's Senior Vice President of Strategy and Advancement. He previously served as National Outreach director for the AFL-CIO. He's a native of California. He's a resident of Washington, D.C. He's a graduate of both Stanford and NYU. Jamal, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for your time. All right. And it is good to be with you, and we're excited about being here in the city of Boston. All right, thank you for being here. Let's start with the purpose of the NAACP convention this weekend. Criminal justice reform, housing, education, and affirmative action. They are all among the hot button issues making national headlines. What are some key issues in your eyes and what is the discussion gonna focus on? Well, for the NAACP, we are a 114 year old policy advocacy institution embedded in communities. And when we think about the nation and this country, we really are on a steady drumbeat to ensure that racial equity is achieved. And so with the issues that you lift up, like the fight to really think about diversity in higher education, making our communities safe, addressing things like gun violence and intercommunity violence, and really thinking about the growth of the economy, all of these are on on the agenda at this year's convention. And we're gonna be joined by some exciting partners and allies to really wrestle with the therefore what as it relates not only to the future of the black community and communities of color, but all communities throughout the nation. And so which of the issues do you think will be the most challenging to address, to talk about, to try to come up with solutions? I would say that what we really find in this moment in the nation is that the partisan politics are eating us alive, meaning you have community after community who are wrestling with, I believe, elected officials who may not want the best for their communities, but are interested in political power. And as always, race and class becomes that issue, that dividing issue that doesn't allow for us to unite in a way that makes sense for the future of the nation. And so in this space where we're nonpartisan, but we're not blind, we're going to speak truth to power to connect the dots and say what is best for every American, what is best for every woman, man and child in terms of both policy and practice that allows for this country to flourish and be the democracy that it ought to be. Jamal, I want to go back to something that you just you just said a few minutes ago. You used a, you used a very good phrase, therefore what? So how do we get on the road to therefore what and therefore now? Sorry, my earpiece came out. Do I need to? You know what? That happens. Okay. That happens. That happens a lot. But wait, I love that. I love that. Therefore, <laughs> what that you said earlier? How do we get to therefore now? Here we go. How we get to therefore now is first and foremost by listening to the people. And I know that may sound very basic or pedestrian, but we have to get back to the pedestrian reality of this nation. And that mm -hmm. is our citizens, the community members that are working and living have real problems and real needs. And how do we meet those needs? So if the cost of groceries, for example, is too high, then what does that say about our economy in terms of employment and the actual livable wages that should be paid to folks? And so the therefore now is really about speaking to the immediate needs of community members and people, mm -hmm. but also unpacking the fact that some of those needs are different based upon the neighborhoods you may live in or who you may have born right. as. And so when we start to focus in on that, that's how you get to the therefore now. Uh, Jamal, the last time the convention was here in Boston was back in 1982 there were racial challenges in the city back then and while there has been significant progress in the city of boston the work is not yet done and, and i'm not just going to single out boston the work is not yet done period former boston mayor marty walsh had pushed to bring the convention to boston why was it ultimately chosen well when you think about 
Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we understand the history of this city, the history of this state, and the importance of the integrity to this nation. But we also understand that you have generated the right type of leadership. And so partnerships with folks like a Marty Walsh, a Senator Warren, a Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, and others really has driven the agenda in the right direction. And we want to continue to partner with the folks who have boots on the ground in this city, like our leadership under Tanisha Sullivan, the president of the Boston branch, and connect the dots nationally because when you think about the politics of a city like Boston and a state like Massachusetts, if it can work here, then it can work anywhere. Well, and, and so, so let me just follow up on that. As I said, and as I said in the intro, you, you're from California. You live in Washington, D.C. So how do you view Boston? Just you, Jamal. Well, growing up as a kid, you know, you learned about the Boston Tea Party, for example, and you understand the history of Boston in terms of politics and people. And so when I think about this city and this state, I understand, similar to my home state of California or the current city I live in, which should be a state, Washington, D.C., that politics matter. And when you're able to demonstrate that something can work for the community and for the people, then it becomes a beacon to the rest of the country. And so for me personally and for our organization, we understand that Boston is a part of the ecosystem ecosystem and Massachusetts is a part of the ecosystem that really is in many ways leading the way for the nation. And so that's part of the reason why we're here. And the other reason why we're here is because you have amazing people who are putting in the sweat, sweat equity and the work on the ground to do the right things to make their communities whole. All right. I want to ask you about Vice President Kamala Harris. She addressed the convention last night. She is the first black woman to serve as vice president. And a major reason that President Joe Biden won in 2020 was thanks to black voters who turned out in states like South Carolina, for instance. Has the Biden-Harris administration lived up to expectations in your view? The Biden-Harris administration had to dig itself out of a ditch as it relates to the previous administration. As I said, our organization is nonpartisan, but we're not blind. And so we understand that when a president and a vice president says they're going to prioritize racial equity and racial inclusion and really making this community and communities around the nation whole by focusing in on investments and healing and all of the wraparounds that really reflect the American dream, it is truly what the black voters and voters of color and working communities have been asking for. And the reality is for many politicians, the road is hard. And so we're grateful that Vice President Harris, that President Biden have stood by their commitments during the campaign side and really have pushed to fight for policy and practices that really make a difference for our communities and the communities we serve. And what more would you like to see them do? We would say that in this moment, we have to be steadfast in keeping a focus on how to continue to improve the state of the nation. In many ways, folks have, have, have amnesia. If a shooting happens yesterday, tomorrow it's another issue. But we can't forget what happened yesterday and how to ensure that it doesn't repeat itself. And so when you're dealing with issues of race and class, those things don't get solved overnight. And so staying focused on finding the right solutions and ensuring those solutions remain in place is really what we're pushing for. And you can apply that to education. You can apply that to health care. You can apply that to the economy. All of the range of policy areas that matter to us, we would say, keep your eye on the prize, stay focused on literally healing and repairing because that is what we need in order to achieve the true American dream.